the fans are in a gay mood. Their Dodgers need only one more victory to give Los Angeles its first baseball championship of the world. Vice President Charles Comiskey and his wife are rooting for the White Sox. Starting pitchers Bob Shaw and Sandy Koufax. Gil Hodges still very happy about yesterday's winning home run. Larry Sherry has reason to grin, too. He got credit for a victory yesterday. With the game scoreless and the Dodgers second, Gil Hodges the batter. Hodges, it's a pop fly into shallow center. Aparicio and Fox both go after it. Louie grabs the ball, they collide, and down go the little magicians. But they bounce right back up again, Aparicio clutching the ball. Still no score in the White Sox fourth when Nelson Fox steps up. Nelly lines a single to right. Roseboro trails him down the line and tries to pick him off on a throw from Moon. Jim Landis lines a single to right and Fox sprints to third. Nobody out and Koufax has power men Lawler and Klazuski coming up. Waller tries to hit the right field, but grounds sharply to Neal, who steps on second, throws to first for the double play. Fox scores with the first run of the game. With one away in the Dodger fourth, Gil Hodges hammers a terrific drive to right center. Jim Landis goes racing back, can't get it, and it rolls to the wall. Landis then fires to Aparicio. Louis relays in the third as Hodges comes storming into the bag trying for a triple. He makes it safely with a long leaping slide to put the tying run on third with only one out. But Hodges gets no farther as Bob Shaw retires the next two Dodgers. Chuck Asijian in the Dodgers seven bats for Wills and Walks. Don Zimmer goes in to run for Asijian. Duke Snyder is sent up to bat for Sandy Colfax. Snyder forces Zimmer at second, Aparicio to Fox. Nelly, however, misses on the double play attempt. Johnny Padres sent in to run for Snyder. Jim Gilliam singles off the screen for his fourth straight hit, and Padres stops at second. There's feverish activity in the bullpen. Manager Lopez tells umpire Bill Summers he is sending Rivera to right field. Shaw unleashes a wild pitch. Gilliam goes to second, and Padres to third. Charlie Neal, the batter. Neal slams the ball deep into right center. Landis speeds towards it, but now Rivera comes racing across and makes an over-the-shoulder catch. Al Lopez, middle-of-the-inning defensive switch paid off. In the Dodger eighth, Wally Moon lifts a routine fly to center. Landis is there, but he's in trouble. He's lost the ball in the sun, and it drops at his feet for a single. With one out, Hodges the batter, belts one down the left field line, right down the line. And both umpires call it foul. And the White Sox breathe easier. But for Lopez, it was far too close for comfort. He has a conference with Shaw. But Hodges isn't stopped completely. He singles to center. And Moon takes third when Jim Landis's throw is too late. Once again, the Dodgers are threatening the skimpy one to nothing Sox lead. Ron Fairley ready to pinch hit for Demeter. It touches off a chain reaction of strategy. Manager Lopez brings in his veteran southpaw, Billy Pierce. Manager Alston counters with right-hand batter Rapolsky. He's purposely passed to load the bases. Now, Alston sends up his ace pinch hitter, Perillo to bat for Roseboro. 
So Lopez goes back to the mound and makes another change. He calls in Dick Donovan. There's only one out, bases loaded, and only a fly ball needed for the tying run. But Donovan gets Perillo on a pop-up to Bubba Phillips. That brings Don Zimmer to the plate. Donovan retires him on another pop fly. Al Smith hauls it down in short left to complete a dramatic clutch pitching job by Donovan. In the Dodger ninth, Donovan retires Charlie Neal. Ground ball to Aparicio. That's the final out, and the White Sox win one to nothing. Chicago's chances are still alive in the series.